Today, I'm gonna to be building a metal shear, one of those bench top style shears that, um, well, it goes on your bench top, really. And uh, it's basically just a glorified pair of scissors for cutting metal. So, welcome back to the Burton Builds Garage. Let's get started. So here's the background. I'm doing a small production run of uh, products. And uh, part of that uh, manufacturing process is uh, cutting some short pieces of six millimeter BMS, specifically uh, this BMS here. And there's 36 meters of it. And I've got to cut these things into little pieces this long. Um, previously, I was doing it with the angle grinder, damn noisy, sparks, burrs. Uh, it's, you know, it, it works, but um, no, it's, it's not that comfortable. So um, I thought about getting a shear, metal shear. Now I've been looking around, there's not a heck of a lot of them available on the market. They are, they are available. Uh, but generally they're quite pricey, four or 5,000 Rand, you know, somewhere around the 400, uh, three to 400 dollar mark, um, US dollars for those of you who deal in uh, real money. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's something I didn't really want to spend money on right now uh, until I know that it's going to work properly. And uh, well, this is kind of a building uh, type come review channel workshop. So why not try and build one? <laughs> and that's basically what happened. I had this idea yesterday, I needed to get this stuff done. And, um, had the idea yesterday, thought about it last night, and then started building it this morning. And then I thought to myself, well, hang on, I haven't actually been filming anything. And I mean, <laughs> this is what you guys are here for, is to see what's happening. So we are slightly down the road in the bowl already. Uh, I've got a few parts over here. Uh, we'll look at them shortly. And uh, yeah, I'll just take you along for the rest of the process. Um, yeah, those old files that you've got lying around, keep them. <laughs> they, they came in handy, uh, definitely for me today. Okay, let's look at these parts. Come on, come over look here. The parts that we're using today are basically these ones over here. Um, so these two are gonna be for the handle. These three are gonna be for the base. These two are the two blades. Um, they come out of a file, we'll talk about that shortly. And then just a, a couple of bolts, some uh, high tensile bolts um, to get everything working together. The handle and the base are just mild steel. Uh, this is a 25 by six millimeter thick um, flat bar. This is 10 by 10. So we'll be welding that on the top there just to give the handle a bit of strength. Uh, these three pieces are uh, 30 by 12, um, just normal cold rolled steel. And the important thing today that I wanted to show you is uh, these blades. Now, <laughs> you know, you need to be using a hard tool steel or, or something that's really hard if you want to cut, um, you know, cut steel and you want the blade to last. So the easiest thing that I thought about was using a file. So thanks very much for the person who gave me this file. Um, I didn't have an old one, he had one, and he said I can cut it up and use it. So thanks very much for that. Uh, files are really hard. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but um, they're used for you know removing material. Now, some of the cheaper files are only case hardened. So uh, just, just the outside will be hardened. The inside is gonna be fairly soft. This is an old school uh, proper file. And uh, this thing is as hard as a woodpecker's lips. Uh, it, it's hard all the way through. So you're not gonna be drilling <laughs> holes in this. Now you might be asking, well, how did I get these holes? These holes were cut on a water jet. I was lucky enough to have access to that. Although guys, don't worry, you don't have to cut holes if you don't, um, or you know, if you don't have access to a water jet or a laser cutter, you can notch, uh, make little notches for your bolt. So there's a little notch for a bolt. Um, so with this hole, we could have notched it from from the top over there, or for these two holes, you could have notched it from there and there. And you can see, yeah, I actually made a notch because I needed a hole over there, and uh, well, I needed to cut a notch uh, because I only thought about this afterwards. So um, I took that old file, cut it up. Uh, these are the three pieces. It was quite a big file, and uh, put it, uh, just basically flattened it on the belt grinder that uh, you guys have probably seen already. And yeah, the rest of the stuff here is just a bit of hardware to, as I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, get the thing working together. I wanted to quickly show you something here on the blades. Now, uh, these blades, just like uh, any file, would have had um, sort of filing marks on it. And you can see that I've ground most of them off. And we've got a couple that are still visible over there. So we might run this through the grinder once more. Uh, but if you have a look, uh, all the edges are quite nicely squared, except for this edge over here. And you can see that that edge has been ground at a slight upward angle. Um, so this is going to be our shearing blade and the reason we do that is so that uh, when we are just like a pair of scissors when we are cutting our round bar it's shearing it on a single point so it makes it a lot easier to cut. So we are working inside today it's a little bit windy outside so not too pleasant um, so I'd rather 
I'd rather work uh, in my rather small garage. Um, something that I do want to say though, uh, for any of you that have been thinking about building or buying a belt grinder, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. These things are amazing. <laughs> I really don't know how I've done it, done without it for all of these years. I've been using angle grinders, I suppose, uh, as many of you have. Uh, man, this is so, so worth the effort of building uh, if you're going to build it or buying it worth the money that you're going to spend. Just make sure you get a powerful enough one. But man, uh, yes, I so far I am loving this thing. It's awesome. So I finished up uh, grinding the two blades. I'm pretty happy with the way they've come out. Um, not 100% perfect, but they're 95% there, which uh, which is fine, especially since I don't know if this thing is going to work 100%. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll reshape them again uh, once I know it's working properly. Anyway, uh, with the blades aside, uh, next thing to do is to fire up the TIG and basically weld the stand together. So the stand is pretty simple. I mean, you, you guys have probably seen these things before. It's got two base or two uh, side legs and sort of an upper leg. And then this thing, uh, the bottom, our bottom jaw, our bottom blade is gonna bolt on through there. We'll have a look at that later, but uh, what we need to now do is just make some welds and uh, make this thing a little bit more sturdy. Uh, we're also going to have to do that, so I'm going to have to clean that metal up. Uh, this stuff is uh, still got a bit of mold scale on, and that's not going to weld so nicely. So, just going to work that off with a flap disc, and I'll be right back.
Okay, managed to get everything welded up, and as you can see, it's quite nice and colorful. It looks quite pretty, um, although the steel has been overheated. That's why you're seeing all of those different colors. But not to worry, this is, of course, this isn't anything um, structural. It's just a home DIY little bench shear. Also fairly simple to um, assemble, and uh, just before we do that, I had to grind two little reliefs here just for the welds over there. I got them pretty small, but uh, not small enough. And uh, yeah, this is the bottom blade or the low blade. It just slides on just like that. And uh, it's kind of supported on the bottom a little bit. And then it's also going to be fastened with this rear fastener, if you will. It's a eight millimeter high tensile cap screw. So we'll fasten that up shortly. Next bit to go in is our, um, this is our actual blade. So there's our cutting, uh, cutting angle. And that's just going to go on like that. And then we'll slide on our handle. Of course, the handle's quite long. You won't get the whole thing in frame. But that thing goes on right there. And uh, I reckon we can put on two washers. Um, <laughs> mostly because the shoulder of that bolt is still sticking out a little bit. So if we didn't have those washers, it wouldn't go on. And then lastly is uh, this, little, this little nut, which actually, uh, if, you, if you have a look here, the, the guillotine blade is actually loose. It's not attached to the handle. So um, what I ended up doing was um, fastening a nut through here. So as we see, it'll go in the top there. And then uh, eventually, sometime, there we go. It'll go through that little handle and we'll just uh, tighten up the nut and basically that is it. Well, a little bit top heavy now, or front heavy should I say, but there's our shear. I'm just going to hold it down here and that's pretty much how it works. Let me tighten everything up and then we'll uh, give it a try. So I've got you guys up nice and close at the business end and uh, basically all that I've done is just G-clamped it with two G-clamps onto my workbench. Uh, that'll work fine for now. We're going to use this piece of BMS 6mm. That's what it's designed specifically to be used with. Uh, only this stuff, although this doesn't look like very bright mild steel. Quite an old piece, um, but nevertheless it's still the same stuff. Yeah, we'll just stick it through the little hole and I'll cut off just a short piece uh, like that first and then uh, one or two other little pieces. So, before I cut this off, I haven't done this yet before. I wanted to do it in front of you guys, so I hope it works. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will. Um, but I might have egg on my face. So <laughs> here we go. I'm going to try and do this slowly so that you can see what's happening. Three, two, one. There we go. Thank goodness it worked. <laughs> yes. Okay, in theory it should have worked, but um, it's always nice to see that it does. And it doesn't look like there's any damage on the blade at all. Um, obviously there was just a little piece of metal there, but let's stick another little piece through. And three, two, one, off. No problems at all. You can actually see it leaves a little mark on the um, on the steel, but if we have a close look at that edge, let's have a look here quickly. You know, you guys can help me look if you don't mind. That edge still looks 100%. So that that little mark is just superficial. I don't know. It's just scuffed up the scuffed up the polished steel there. Let's try another one. Three, two, one, off. No problem at all. And as you can see, it's quite a quite a nice flush cut, which is really good for for that side. Uh, the other side, uh, if we have a look here, is uh, just also a little bit, I don't know, misshapen. But it would be there should be a flat on it. There we go. We can see the little flat on there. That's from the shearing part of the blade. We should be able to see it over here as well. You can see over there, that's where the blade, this front blade is shearing on there. So one end is going to be good. One end will have to be ground off, but that's not a problem because I have to cut it off with a zip wheel anyway uh, once it's in the product that I'm making. So I'm pretty happy with that. So there we go, chaps. Build is pretty much complete. Before you go anywhere, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on the video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this build. Uh, I know it is small, but it does its one specific job pretty damn well. Um, let me know if we, <laughs> if we should be painting it, if we should be um, black oxide coating it, or just leaving it colorful the way it is. Let me know in the comments. I'll uh, hang on for a, a good couple of days before I end up spraying it. If, um, if I do paint it, it's probably going to be blue or red, uh, a bright blue or a, or a fire engine red. Um, I suppose if it is painted, it won't really rust then. 
Yeah, um, I'm super stoked with the way it came out. Uh, it, I mean, it took me basically the day to build, but I think that time of building it over the day is going to save me a lot of uh, headache with uh, noise, with cutting discs, with uh, with cleaning burrs, you know, uh, grinding burrs over the probably five to seven hundred little pins that I have to cut. I'll also <laughs> give you guys an update on uh, how it goes after those five or seven hundred odd pins, how this blade has held up. Um, I've never done this type of thing before. Also, maybe if you guys have made shears and used a, an old file as the blade, and you know any different, let us know in the comments. It'll, it'll be really nice to hear from you. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe in the future we'll make a bigger one. There's going to be some more restorations coming up. So there was the vice a little while ago. And if you missed that belt, belt grinder build, uh, you know, just check in the videos uh, one or two back. Uh, you'll see it there. So yeah, some more stuff uh, on the horizon. So stick around, um, come back for that. And <laughs> yeah, guys, I guess we'll see you next time. Cheers.